okay. Well, it's good to see you guys anyway. <laughs> nice to see you as well. Yes, Bruce, it is. That's my yes, partner, Rena. Thank you so much for joining us. And before we even get started, congratulations on the, an achievement that is pretty slim for many people. Thank you so well, much for the great music. It came as a great surprise because we did at some point we that we didn't think we'd ever get in actually to be honest. Right. I mean, I think a lot been, of people feel that way. I don't know how they really even do the choosing, but monumental. Yeah, I mean, it's it's such an honor to be actually you know nominated, let alone inducted, which we're hoping for. We're getting a lot of votes. We're really doing well. Right. Uh, it's funny. I, I was looking on Instagram this morning at uh, Mark Ronson's. Uh, uh, site on there, and he was he was being interviewed about about us being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because he's Mick Jones's stepson, Mark oh, Robson, wow. and he showed a clip of Paul McCartney in his car. It was just hilarious. He <laughs> said, "Foreigner and not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That's effing ridiculous." I mean, he did an f bomb. I mean, he really did it, and, I, and we were all just. <laughs> Cry with laughter because I mean, he, Paul just doesn't do that usually, right? But and it's been it's... a long time coming, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah he has I mean... a point, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's taken 22 years of waiting to yeah. get to this point, and so it, it's a big deal for us because we're very thrilled, we really are. Where were you at the moment you heard it? Well, I was at home here in Florida. Um, my manager, Phil Carson, had warned me during the week. He said, there's going to be an announcement, Rick, on the weekend. He said, but I can't tell you what it is because it's a secret. And I thought, I wonder what it is. I thought, you know, maybe he's going to surprise us and say, well, we're going to play the Superdome or something. You know, I don't know. It's Super Bowl. Secret. So suddenly on Saturday, I, I was looking on Instagram and I saw Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees. And there was our name, along with Peter Frampton and you know all these other guys, Ozzy Osbourne people. And I suddenly dawned on me, it's finally happened. We've been nominated. Great. Yeah, it was a great moment, and it's really given us a lift. All the guys in the band is just thrilled. Yeah, well, I've been a fan of you guys forever, and I'm going to tell you the first concert I ever went to in my life, I saw you on the Foreigner Four tour. With Bill wow. Squire at the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. So that's like 83 ish, maybe? Yeah, it'd be a bit bigger at that time, 82, 83. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, that, that year was just nuts for us. After the Four and Four album came out, it just took off. I mean, it was just incredible. And so we just had to tour. We had so many great, you know, support artists too, along with Billy Squire. We had Joe Walsh. We had Brian Adams. I mean, these are big artists in their own right. And yet there were we finishing the show every night. <laughs> so it was pretty amazing. <laughs> it was great. It, it was a huge year for me, too. I think I started Solid Foods, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Nice. <laughs> but I guess that, that's, that's what I'm here music, for. Right? Stupid jokes. Yeah. No, but I yeah, guess I mean, that's the power of, right? You've gone through all these generations of fans. Well, you know, it's really intriguing because I joined the band in 79, right before we did the Headgates album. And if you'd have told me then that 40 years or more later, we'd still be relevant today and people would still be listening to Farrah, I wouldn't have believed you. You know, I really wouldn't. I don't think any of us would. But yet, you know, the, the name's still strong. The current band that's out there, that, by the way, we put out that they're not a covers band. And some people say that's not right. We, we we put those guys in to take on, you know, what we do because we're all getting old and uh, we don't like the touring so much anymore. The travel just right. kills us, you know. But uh, we're going to do as much as we can this year. I know that I'll be doing as many shows as I can, and Al Greenwood certainly will as well. The original keyboard player, you know, Mick and Lou have had some health issues over the years as well, which has been a factor in them not always being there. But I think for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, we're all going to make the effort. I know Dennis Elliott wants to do it, the drummer. I know Al Greenwood does. I certainly do. We're hoping Mick and Lou will be there with us too. Because yeah, we know we can do it. That happen. Yeah, I mean, we know we could do it with the current guys because Kelly Hansen is such a great front man and singer. And all the guys in the band are superb musicians. But, um, you know, this is very special. I mean, we hope to be in Cleveland come the fall to do this. And show everybody that yes, we can still stand up there and play. 
Yeah. Rena? It's all very it's good. Yeah, that sounds like an excellent plan. And I think it would be such a shame if the entire band wasn't there oh. for well. for the main main event. And uh well it, it, like Bruce said, this is like an absolute privilege to be able to play for decades and still be relevant and, and still have uh new fans. So do you get a lot of these these like uh two generation kind of fans that you get the or maybe even three that you get a grandma and a mom and, and a daughter yep. or guys like <laughs> but anyway is this like a thing that happens? Yeah well it just this is intriguing because I, I try and do shows from time to time whenever they're near me or wherever I am. I have a home up in New Hampshire and one here in Florida. So I will definitely be playing with the band in St. Augustine on or uh, March the twelfth. And it also happens to be my wife's birthday that day. So we're going to go and celebrate that as well. So I will definitely be there for that. So if you know, if you want to come and see a couple of the original guys, I will be there. That's for sure. Nice. Yeah. Sounds and, excellent. Yeah. I mean, you know, we try and do as much as we can. And, and now that this has happened, I think we'll make more effort to get out and be with the band and, you know, do the end of the show with them as we've been doing. And it's uh, it's just so nice to actually see the different ages in the audience from, you know, very young to pretty old, actually, to be honest. Yeah. But they, yeah, they're the there thing. for the music, you know, and they sing along. They, they know all the lyrics. And, you know, we've had a lot of big hits in our time and they know every word. It's great. It's really encouraging. I, I did a terrible thing to one of your songs one time. Uh -oh. to. uh, uh <laughs> To to celebrate my friend Chell's birthday, he turned forty. So I took, uh, I want to know what love is, and just made it into I want to know what Chell is. By, uh, <laughs> by That's all right. Strategic. We you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was it was absolutely hilarious, and it's like strategically replacing some words with Chell. Yeah. In, in That's the, okay. like, yeah, it, it's That's it's okay. not bad. Mm. You got you got Rick's blessing now, so you're good, Rena. You can thank you. Consider yourself That's good. I can I can now sleep easy, and I haven't <laughs> since. You know. <laughs> but, listen, a lot of people when they see us, you know, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, "I want to know what love is." You know. Oh, I can imagine. And that's just one of those things that you know, you can't feel bad about it, can you? I mean, this it's good. It's all positive. So yeah, we're very happy. I mean, Considering you're ingrained in someone's head this many years later is, yeah, I mean, there's nothing. And not just someone's head, but like basically <laughs> the entire history of humanity. Like that, that <laughs> song. No, true. I'm not even exaggerating. You know, oh. that it, it's such a like a shared hive mind uh, yeah. type of thing that it's everybody knows from the first notes. Like, ah, oh, there we go. Everybody know, wants to know what love is, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. I would be ecstatic if that was a mark or like... Well, you, a you can imagine can how leave. it makes us feel. We feel very proud that people feel yeah. that way, you know? And it's, uh, it's, it's this thing that with this nomination for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has come at such a time when it just seems to have rounded out our careers as well, which is a really nice feeling. I said to my wife, I said, you know, I just feel so so ready for this now. I'm really up for it because we've waited such a long time and we just couldn't understand why we never got put in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, what else could we do? I mean, we've done everything. We right, do. everything <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what more do you want? <laughs> exactly, you know. We are already in the, in the like, engraved into the history of humanity. What more could you possibly be know. after? You know, it's no, fun but... kind of watching the votes go in every day. And Ozzy obviously is in, in the lead at the moment. And, you know, he deserves to be there, that's for sure. And we're in second place and Peter Frampton is in third. You know, who you probably know, I used to play with Peter. In fact, the I very first it. thing we ever did together was co-write Do um, Do You Feel Like We Do, wow. which has become his anthem, you know, without right. a doubt. Mm -hmm. And so good luck to him. To he him? deserves it. Pardon? Do you still talk to him? Yeah, from time to time, yeah. I wrote Are you guys ribbing each other here? Yeah, I mean, I said to him, I said, wouldn't it be nice if we both get inducted and on that night we can catch up, reminisce, and just have a great time, you know, doing this thing, because it's just very special. Yeah. 
it's beyond Indeed. special, especially. Uh, yeah. Well, since since you do have like this decades of experience and like decades of of doing spectacular things with spectacular people, would you say that you have uh, a, like a favorite decade? Um, it's hard, really, because it's all been so special in many ways. Mm. I mean, obviously, the eighties were really, really big for us because of. You know, we were a bit disappointed with the head games. You know, some people really loved it, but some people took offence at the album cover of the girl in the urinal. I don't know why. I thought it was funny because, I mean, it is called head games. That's what it's all about. And it, it wasn't like smell the glove. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we, we kind of felt when we went in the studio with Mutt Lang to do the four album that we had to come up with something really special. And he was determined also. I mean, Mutt Lang's a really hard-working producer. At times, you know, Mick and he would, would clash heads. You know, I, mean, it's, I can't lie. You know, they, they saw things differently sometimes. But in the end, we got an album that we're super proud of because everything on it just, you know, I thought some of it was a bit risky. I mean, when we did Urgent, we, we hadn't done anything really like that before. And we brought Junior Walker in to play the sax solo. Right. And we brought in Thomas Dolby and people like that from the UK to just give us different textures, really. And we came up with the goods, you know, between Urgent, Jukebox Hero, Waiting for a Girl Like You, we were off to a flying star, that's for sure. So the rest of the year was just sell out, sell out, sell out tours. And it was very exciting, you know, and it carried on from there. I mean, we still came up with the goods after that, you know, with um, Unusual Heat and all these other albums that we made. And uh, I don't know, it's just been great. It's been really good to be part of it. That was like right at the advent of MTV too, right? Right around four? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I must admit, we weren't too thrilled about MTV at first because we weren't really a video type band. I mean, that's one thing. People always say, oh, you're faceless. You know, well, I suppose to, to, to a degree we are. But that wasn't what we were in it for. We were in it for the music, what we could come up with, you know, and challenge ourselves to really make great songs. But, of course, we eventually did do videos for, for these things. But, you know, videos are, well, to put it mildly, a bit of a pain in the butt because you have to be there like at six in the morning to start makeup and, hang around, hang around, do a take, hang around, do another take. It's a long day. And it's kind of, you know, I don't know. You know, some people love it, I guess, but we weren't one of those people <laughs> that loved it. Yeah, clearly. But what what do you think about, like, the like a, a video, can, can it be seen, like, as a enhancer of the storytelling that is already in the song? Like, I, I would look at it as a added layer of getting our message across or our vision yeah. across. No, I mean, it's important, that's for sure. And MTV did a very good job of how they presented it. The presenters were good. The whole thing, you know, really, really, you know, was, was well worth being part of. But it, we found it a bit tiring. At times. Sorry, that's my house phone ringing at the moment. I don't know who that is, but I, I hope my wife's going to call answer it upstairs. Anyway, let's, let's, let's keep talking. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Sorry about also, who has a house phone? <laughs> <laughs> if it's not my dog barking, it's the phone ringing. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Well, clearly you have friends and dogs, so your life is going great. So. Oh, yeah. We're happy. I mean, I you know, it's know just been ones. wonderful but where we live here. I mean, I, I, everybody I talk to, they say, how's it going? I said, well, it would go better if you would vote every day for us as well. And they, they, they get on board and they do it. And yeah. it's just been, it's been really nice to see I think it's made people happy, to be honest. That's really what it's done. They think it's more than about time that we were in the Hall of Fame, put it that way. I, I was shocked you weren't, actually. I don't know so that I we. realized you weren't, and then I saw that, that message yeah. from Vanessa, and I was like, oh, man. So well, I need to ask you the most important question, and it's really not even foreigner related, but what kind of dogs do you have? Because we're dog lovers. It's a Cocker Spaniel. Oh, okay, She's, cool. We brought her over from England when she was just a puppy. She's now seven years old. And she's the nice. loveliest little dog ever. She's so kind, so sweet. She loves everybody. She loves every other dog. What's her name? You know, Dusty. 
Dusty. Dusty. Was, yeah, she was born on Springfield Road. That's why I called her Dusty. Dusty. Springfield. I love it. Wow. I love it. <laughs> great, actually. I, I Dusty Springfield is like my favorite all time. I know. Me, me too. <laughs> really? Great. That's excellent. I love her so much. <laughs> and I would love your dog too. You <laughs> by would. default. As, as, and she would. She... Love me by default, yeah, so I am, I am liking this. She would lick you all over. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, amazing. I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum. I have a great Dane Loki, but wow, he lick you all over too, just a lot bigger. Yeah, I mean they are a real big dog. They are. That's a handful. I don't know yeah, if I can manage that. Now. Pounds right now. Oh my goodness, that's a big dog. <laughs> he actually took Bruce's place doing this podcast yeah. once. It was hilarious. Sometimes like he went to the bathroom and he just oh, walked right. in and took his spot and was just sitting there like nonchalantly, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's funny. That's too much information, folks. <laughs> we also had Steve Luongo's dog sing us uh, The Lion yeah. Sleeps yeah. Tonight on the oh, show. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you, you might have to kick up your game a little bit. To... <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Rick, I told That's Vanessa funny. I would keep it to uh to twenty minutes, and we're just about there. Thank okay, you so well, much listen, for taking the time. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and I, you know, sorry I had a little bit of a problem getting up, and you couldn't see me. But you know, right now I've got a beard, and you probably don't want to see that at the moment because I had a face <laughs> peel recently for sun damage, oh, so wow. I let my beard grow, and uh, I'm looking a little tacky at the moment, and uh, I'm going to have to do something about it. Hey, so I'm going to say right just, now, anybody watching this, go vote. Keep voting every day. Yeah, exactly. Everybody go vote so Foreigner really yeah, please really do. make it through the... Yeah. It's See really you guys easy. Just go, it. You just go to vote.rockhall.com and you can vote for Foreigner. All you've got to do is put your email and your name in and you can vote every day and help us along. Thank you for your contributions to music. You've pretty much been the soundtrack to my life when I start looking at all the Thinking about all the songs that you know I've grown up listening to, it's crazy. Oh, thank you so much. And I both wish you a very happy day and a great day. Take care. Of thank you, summer. Richard. It was lovely meeting you. Hope to and have a too. chat sometime again. Okay. And yeah. um, give that little dog some scratches from us. Okay. We'll do. And we'll take see you at the Hall of Fame. Take okay. care. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.